there's so many pieces and parts and facets to Cyril Lemon, and uh, he's already established himself as one of the better players uh, in our program. You know, the thing is, is he's never going to miss anything. He's always going to do the right thing in the workouts, um, study, study hall, tutoring, classroom. He'll be up for many, many, many national awards, not, not only local, regional, but national awards academically because of what he's done on the field and what he's done in the classroom. Nearly a Dean's List student every semester. Come on! We talk all the time about when you're on the field in a game or practice, giving four to six seconds of relentless effort. That's Cyril. It just seems like, you know, every series I see him picking himself up off the ground because he's going all out. He's giving everything he has. He's a three-year starter. You don't too, many, too much see a true freshman starting at the O-line position, so it shows you about him as playability, but off the field, he's, he's even better off the field. On the field, Cyril, Cyril Lemon will strike you with the best of them. He'll, he'll hit you hard, he'll come after you from whistle to whistle. And off the field, he, he's real quiet. You can barely get a couple words out of him. You have to say something to him for him to start talking to you. He's, he's a young man that we're really proud of in this program. And um, you have a lot of guys like that, you're going to win a lot of games. And then you stop and think about the spiritual side to him. And I first understood where he kind of was coming from when he was in Louisiana. They were in New Orleans uh, right before Katrina hit and the whole church ended up moving around uh, throughout the south until they settled down near Austin and, and Marble Falls. And we end up, Mike Simmons and I, end up down in his living room after we basically begged him to let us come into his home because recruiting was kind of over when we got here. And the rest is history. Now he's come here, he's flourished, he's a great player, he's a great young man. But they call him the Reverend because the spiritual side of his life is really, really important to him. He's a very spiritual man, uh, but I think Cyril has the respect of his teammates as well. Cyril's a hard worker, and uh, he's got those guys respect a lot. So I think when they call him the Rev, uh, they're not poking fun at him. I think that's a sign of respect from them to him. It's just how he handles himself as a young man. You know, he's he leads by example. He's got a quiet demeanor. But when he does say something, people listen. The role of a spiritual leader is one is having somebody who is a good compass uh, to kind of navigate through life of one, what do I do in class? How do I um, obey my coaches? How do I submit underneath leadership? How do I follow in suit in line? And so having a spiritual leader kind of is the, the compass for the football team. You know, I, I grew up on principles that come from the Word, come from the Bible, and I tried to impart some of that wisdom that I had, that I, that I was given when I was younger. He doesn't apologize for it. He doesn't make any excuses for it. He's tough, he's hard-nosed, he's relentless on the field. Uh, he's a great ambassador and representative of the program off the field, and yet there's, there's a spiritual side to him that means so much to him. If something happens and I'm not around, I'm not able to do something, Cyril fills in for me so he can pray for the team and uh, kind of fill in if, I, if I'm absent. Uh, good ball, come on, love, love. I'm asking that you even touch this team, keep us focused, keep us ready, love. Touch this team, trap your angels around us, keep us, protect us, and uh, love, you. When it comes time for a team prayer, when it comes time for some spiritual nourishment, Cyril Lemon's always there, not only for the offensive line, but for our entire football team. Uh, I think it's very important for there to be a player on the team uh, who the other players consider a spiritual leader. Um, he, uh, he knows those guys, he's in the locker room with those guys, so uh, for Cyril to be living out his faith uh, on the team, in the locker room, uh, that's very important. Well, you have to carry yourself in a higher standard, you know. Nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect, especially. But you have to, you know, take, take the things that you encounter in life and you, like, you basically spread it. You tell others about it and you impart that wisdom into others. Having a good football team is all about building a program. So when you have younger guys come in and they're able to look at guys like Cyril Lemon, who's doing it the right way on and off the field, it makes those young guys you know, look and see that they can be successful, you know, doing things the right way how he's doing it, you know, not being in trouble, staying, you know, stay, having good grades off the field and then uh, producing on the field. He's a leader. He, uh, he does everything right and he, he's the guy that, he's a big reason why this, this program is heading in the right direction. You know, we want a young man that's going to be, do the right thing on and off the field at all times, excel in academics and excel on the football field. 
And Cyril exemplifies that as a, as a football player and a student athlete at the University of North Texas. This episode of Beyond the Green is brought to you by Bud Light. Oh, come on! That's a hole! I hate watching with Ramsey. All he does is yell. They can't hear you, Ramsey. But every time he's come over this year, we've won. And he always brings Bud Light. Little dog won't come out from under the couch. But we're winning. I love you, Ramsey. Bud Light, for the fans who do whatever it takes. The countdown is over. College football is back in Apogee Stadium. This season marks two huge milestones as North Texas celebrates 100 years of football and the inaugural season in Conference USA. Mean Green Football. North Texas hosts UTEP for homecoming on November 9th. Visit MeanGreenSports.com for more. Oh, what's going on? Hey, uh, make sure you bring your test. Yeah, I'm last night. So... <laughs> last year it was a lot more difficult. They were always sleeping. This year they're always up, so it makes it easy. Sheldon and, and Zed. So hopefully Sheldon's teaching Zed how to tie a tie. Yeah, right? Trying, trying they didn't have to do that at Louisville. Oh! That's the day in the life of a 6 o'clock game. Starting now at 9 o'clock. Rise and shine, man. How you doing, Mace? Rise and shine, huh? You good? You awake, Jimmy? Oh, yeah, you awake, man. You awake. You ready to go. Are they awake or asleep? What'd you have? Had well, to get them up? Jimmy, I had to physically wake oh, them. Every week. I shake just, them. Everybody else knocks you know, them. Like what you always do is oh, take the curtain covers and throw them off them. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to wake them up. Yeah, we went. I ain't got no three rounds. Shut up. <laughs> We had the uh, 10 storylines of the day leading right up to ESPN game day. And talking about Bobby Stoops in Oklahoma, and talking about the Ohio State, Penn State game, big, big uh, teams that are you know headliners every Saturday. All of a sudden, here's highlights of North Texas. And they're talking about uh, what a great storyline it is right now that six of seven games that we've played in the second half, North Texas has not given up a touchdown in the entire half. So think about that for a little bit, man. I got some damn goosebumps when I saw it. Because it's usually everybody but North Texas. It's everybody else in the country but us. And if you keep winning games, there's going to be more of that. And that's respect, and that's honor, and that's prestige, and that's recognition for who we are and what we built in this room. So before we get going here uh, with vitamin AC, I want you to think about that because that's impactful. That's powerful. That's stuff this place hadn't known about for a long time. And to me, we're only just begun. So let's have a great day together, man. Make sure we take care of business tonight and get out of here with number five. Uh, a little vitamin AC this morning. How about a little Ryan Walters? Whatsoever you vividly imagine, sincerely believe, ardently desire, and enthusiastically act upon must inevitably come to pass. So what does that mean? Now you can hear that and just take from it that, you know, whatever you dream about or whatever you want is going to come true, but we all know that's not the case. So what does this have to do with us in terms of our goals or goal, I should say, hit six? Now you either hit six or you don't, right? You either win six games and, and play in the postseason, or you don't and you sit your ass at home during the holidays. You know, do, do we vividly imagine it? I think so. I know Breland and, and Sarge have seen themselves playing in a bowl game. Do we sincerely believe it? I, th I think so. I know, I know Zach Orr believes it. Do we ardently desire it? I think so. I think back to the locker room after the Tulane game. You know, I saw guys crying after that game because they know how precious this season is, how valuable every opportunity is, and we let one slip away that day. You know, have we enthusiastically acted upon it? Yeah, you're damn right, because I think back to, to fall camp and being a part of some of the most intense, violent practices I've ever seen. You guys have worked your ass off. We've been living it and talking about it for too damn long for it not to happen. We're going to hit six. And then we're going to hit seven. And then we're going to hit eight. 
and then we're gonna hit nine, and then we're gonna go to play in a conference championship game and hit 10, and then we're gonna go to a bowl game for four or five days and hit 11, and not only become part of something great, but become legendary in the terms of the history of North Texas football. But first, we gotta hit five. And right now, Southern Miss is standing in the way of what we vividly imagine, of what we sincerely believe, of what we ardently desire, and what we've enthusiastically acted upon. Man, good luck tonight. Oh my god. You're not me on the show. Somebody needs to Big in itself is a miracle. You feed it apples and garbage and it gives you bacon. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Great action, D. Good. You guys up front, go get that quarterback. We got a younger offensive line, go rough him up and go after him. And so we're going to tackle. The next thing is turnover, stripping the ball, interception. Get the ball back, go after him. And then relentless. It should feel good. We get plenty of rest, so let's crank this up and get it going. You good? Yeah. Think about it. Think about it. Championship defense on three every week. One, two, three. Championship defense. Yeah, days like today when we have like a later game, we have a lot of downtime. I'm actually able to watch the show because we always miss it and it comes on during times when we have football stuff going on, meetings and walkthroughs and stuff. So it's kind of enjoyable to sit around and watch some of the stuff that we actually do and some of the small conversations that we have on the sidelines or during practice or just walking around, it's really interesting because you never quite think about it until it actually actually watching yourself. So it's pretty entertaining. Welcome to UNT. You came to UNT to get an education. We're going to give you an education. For over 375 years, our nation's citizen soldiers have sacrificed, struggled, and triumphed at home and abroad. Through resolve, resilience, and readiness, our Army National Guard continues its proud legacy. As citizen soldiers, we are your next door neighbors. We're your colleagues in schools, offices, and factories. In every corner of America, the Army National Guard is nearby. The Army National Guard.